Well, good morning, and welcome to Suncoast Metropolitan Community Church, where we teach and practice truth, trust, and transformation. So if you are visiting with us for the first time and you did not get a welcome packet, will you raise your hand? Anybody? All right. Good job, ushers. All right. Excellent. Wonderful. Well, we're glad if you're visiting with us for the first time. Welcome, welcome. We hope you feel the warmth and love in this place today. And now let's welcome our online worshipers. Welcome all of you from all over the country and some from even outside. We bless you and uh, we hope you'll join the chat and that you'll help us um, <clears throat> know you better. Tell us how many worshiping with your party, and if you have any prayer requests, let us know today. All right, well, welcome back, evacuees. Welcome back, everybody who uh, wasn't sure we had church last Sunday. We're glad you're here with us today, and uh, as we survive and continue to uh, be a part of helping our community recover from this experience. And so, all right, so Maria, you have some announcements for us today. Good morning, Suncoast MCC. Good morning. We have one more week in our lost coin jars. We have received $828.99 to date. If anyone still would like to match any part of that, that would help us exceed our goal. 
Thanks to everyone who came out to help Judy and Cheryl with landscaping yesterday. And now Santa has an announcement to make. Good morning. Good morning. We would like to invite you to come and spend a relaxing afternoon with director Lynn Cleary and the Suncoast Wind Ensemble. That'll be on November 8th at 2.30. You can register online, pick up a flyer. It has a QR code. You can register that way or you can pay at the door. It's $10, but veterans get in free. All right. So let's come together and celebrate our veterans. Thank you. Today is our Pillars Sunday, a week late, but once a month we use the yellow envelopes. However, for today, please use the white envelopes and just mark it Pillars since we didn't have enough yellow. Um, and that would contribute to our Suncoast MCC mortgage. It's also CHAP Sunday, one week late, and we invite you to bring your hygiene items to help our families and individuals impacted by HIV AIDS. Our monthly board meeting is Tuesday, October 22nd at 2 p.m. at the church in person only. We continue to help out families with babies and toddlers with our bundles of joy diaper distribution. If you can bring in diapers for little ones, we are collecting them this month in the container at the back of the church. Our congressional care meeting is rescheduled for this Tuesday, October 22nd at 1 p.m. Our community partners meeting has been rescheduled for this coming Wednesday, October 23rd at 2 p.m. In addition, our partners, I'm sorry, in addition, our partner school Glen, Alley, Glen Allen Elementary has asked us to participate in collecting shoes for boys. The sizes are in staying connected. We will also collect these the rest of the month in the container provided. This Wednesday at 4 p.m. begins our four-week class on Jesus for everyone, not just for Christians, led by Reverend Nancy. If you can sign up in the lobby, that would give us an idea of how many to expect. Our volunteer brunch and awards program has been postponed from October 27th and will now be a part of our generosity Thanksgiving dinner on Friday, November 22nd. Please stay tuned for more details. It is that time of year again. Applications for the Board of Directors are on the table in the lobby, or you can find it on the website. Please return into the office or to a board member. Please put on your calendar our annual congressional forum on November 10th after church. Um, <clears throat> lost my space. Hold on a second. And our annual congressional meeting is November 17th after church. And now Reverend Nancy will help us celebrate our October birthdays and anniversaries. All right. So let's get ready to look at all these birthdays. Come on, come on, come on, keep coming, come on. Look at that. All right. There's a lot. There's a lot. Look. Ooh, one big one coming up this coming week. Yeah, Reverend Rick. Okay. All right. And anniversaries. This past week, Ralph and Paul. All right, so much coming up. So let's sing together. Happy birthday to you. Happy anniversary to you. Happy birthday, happy birthday. Happy anniversary to you. Check out our website and our Staying Connected e-news for more info on ways to be involved. 
Now let's take a moment to greet each other safely. Please rise if you are able. And on the count of three, open your arms wide and extend a warm welcome to all joining us in person and online. One, two, three. Please join me in singing this morning, Sun Coast. Christ has broken down the wall. Christ has broken down the wall. Let us join our hearts as one. Christ has broken down the wall. Revolutionary, which in its earliest form meant finding a course around a central point. We gather around the light of Christ as the center and guiding light of our lives. This becomes our point of reference for our relationships and our love in the world. This is our humility revolution. Let us pray. Creator God, we ask you to come close and remind us of our belovedness as your children, for we are feeling distant. Open our eyes to the beauty and pain we all contain and invite us to do unto others in ways that build up your kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. We pray this in the name of Jesus, the center that holds, and in the power of the Spirit that transforms. Amen. We're accepted as we are. We're accepted as we are. Through God's awful reconciled, we're accepted as we are. Good morning. Please rise as you're able as we sing, In Christ There Is No East or West. Mm -hmm.
Today, we continue our worship series that points us toward connection in a world of divisions. The root of the word human is the same as the word humility. It means on the ground. From dust we came, and to dust we shall return. When we hear each other's hopes, anxieties, and pain, we can return to the ground of hope, that we are all experiencing the pains of being human. This week, look first at our neighbors as a person, not a position. This will help us stay human and on the ground with one another, rather than needing to always come out on top. We are on opposite sides, it seems. It is hard to even talk about it. What if we don't see eye to eye? What if you never see things as I do? I cannot imagine what will happen to all of us. I'm not sure I can handle this tension, this pain. Wait. Breathe. Breathe. Let the anxiety take a break for just a moment. Amen. We are not alone. Christ, Christ is with us. us. Let us take a deep breath together. The rhythm of our breath and heartbeat is the same. Our desire for life and love is the same. Our desire for a peace in which we flourish is the same. Let this moment permeate our souls. This peace is meant for all people. Amen. Amen. Today's scripture speaks of approaching one another with all humility, gentleness, and patience. What we put into the world is part of the ongoing creation of the world. Notice the scripture doesn't say that unity requires agreement, but rather that we are to cultivate the qualities that equip us to live in unity regardless of agreement. Can we begin to believe this is possible? Hear these words from the fourth chapter of Ephesians. I, therefore, the servant of our God, beg you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling to which you have been called with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, making every effort to maintain the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one spirit just as you were called to the one hope of your calling, one Savior, one faith, one baptism, one God and parent of all, who is above all and through all and in all. May these sacred words challenge and guide us along our journey. Amen. And now please stand as you are able as we sing We Are One. We 
You may be seated. <clears throat> Would you join me in prayer? Loving, gracious God, I ask in these moments, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be pleasing and acceptable in your sight, for you are our strength and our redeemer. Well, today we continue our series of Do Unto Others. Uh, Reverend Vicki Miller started us off our first week because of our church cruise that many of us were on, and Vicki's topic was kindness. Last week, Reverend Nancy spoke on compassion, and this week, my topic is humility. Now, I do want to say, before we get started, though, I want to say a huge thank you to the 365 people that it took to decorate this <laughs> sanctuary. My, oh, my. Uh, we had a great time. There were lots of opinions that went around the room. I can assure you of that. Uh, but I think it turned out great. And thank you to everybody who helped get it all decorated. So what does it mean to live a life of humility? What does it mean to be humble? The dictionary gives a variety of definitions for the word humble, and the one I want us to focus on today is the definition courteously respectful. I don't know about you, but I'll be glad when this election cycle is over. I'll be glad for a couple of reasons. One, I'm tired of the television commercials. And number two, the anticipation of the outcome is grueling for me right now, and I know it is for many of you as well. I was talking to one of the people who live in our community recently who has a gay son. Michael and I have become fond of her, and she told me that she considers herself apolitical meaning she doesn't have much interest in politics and that she was pretty much neutral with a bit more liberal leanings. Others we have talked with in our community align with the political beliefs that Michael and I hold, while others are way far to the other side of our convictions and beliefs. I am very politically minded and have voted in every election since I was 18 years old. Uh, even when I was in college, I had a friend who worked uh, at the elections office in my hometown in Kokomo, Indiana, and she faithfully would send me an absentee ballot so that I could vote even in uh, the local elections and the elections that I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't be home to vote for. Michael, on the other hand, was not overly politically minded when we met, and yet over the years, I've managed to convert him. <laughs> I say all of this because I remember when there was civility around election cycles, that there was respect for one another's beliefs and convictions, even when they differed from mine. But things have changed. We live in a hostile political environment, and there is mudslinging and name-calling on both sides. What does this have to do with being humble? Well, as a child, I was taught what is known as the golden rule, which says, do unto others as you would have them do unto you, right? And part of the golden rule is the tagline of our preaching series, the do unto others. How much better off would our world be if we simply lived and practiced the golden rule? What if we simply treated others as we wanted to be treated? What if we spoke to others in the way we wanted to be spoken to? Our scripture lesson from Ephesians says, I beg you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling to which you have been called 
with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, making every effort to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. The author of Ephesians is often attributed to the Apostle Paul, but scholars are not sure he is the actual one who wrote it, and they're not even convinced he even wrote it to only one church in Ephesus, but perhaps a group of churches. This exhortation from Ephesians is really another way of stating the golden rule. What I find compelling about this passage is the word beg. The author is begging the readers to live a life of humility. Or, based on the definition I shared earlier, we are being begged to, to live a life that is courteously respectful. To act with kindness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, making every effort to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. The author is begging the readers to conduct their lives in this way. Listen, we don't beg unless we really need something, right? There are not only great, these are not only great words to live by during an election cycle, but they're strong words to guide us in how we treat others in general, even those we go to church with. It's not easy to conduct ourselves in this way, is it? At least for some of us. We are often conditioned to take the position that we are right, that our point is the best way. We want to be right. Who wants to be wrong? <laughs> right? <coughs> Excuse me. That's not how we're conditioned. We're con we want to be right. We're conditioned to be right. We want to prove our point, and we want to sway everybody to our way of thinking, right? Maybe it's just me. <laughs> we want to prove our point, don't we? We want others to see our way. And if they don't, we want to convince them of the error of their ways and persuade them to see things the way that we see them. Now, some of you may be thinking, well, that's not me. I was like, okay, you maybe need to get in your prayer closet figure that out. <laughs> Only the Pentecostals really know about the prayer closet, but you know, it's all right. It's all right. I'll explain later. <laughs> it's unfathomable to me when I hear some of the arguments from those who believe differently than I do, and I ask myself, can they actually believe the way that they do? I stand back, scratch and shake my head back and forth in disbelief all the while thinking, do they hear themselves? How do they actually believe such nonsense? Am I alone in that? No. All right, just checking, just checking. When I worked at the motel in Naples uh, that I just left recently, uh, I was the assistant manager. And most of whom I worked with aligned similarly with more liberal views, uh, such as mine, except the manager, Maria. She and I would have some very deep conversations about a woman's right to choose, about trans people, about gun control, and other topics. Yeah, we went there. She is very supportive of the LGBTQIA community, and yet we disagreed on a lot. But we also found ways to talk, to listen, and to hear without becoming angry and mean-spirited. Well, at least outwardly <laughs> with each other. I mean, inside, honestly, there were times where I would just be like, are you kidding me? <laughs> And yet I would just nod and smile. Really? All right, all right. I hear what you're saying. I would acknowledge I hear what you're saying. While all the time thinking, and I do not disagree. I mean, I do not agree. 
And yet we were able to really talk. And she told me one time, she said, you know what, Rick, because of some of the discussions we've had, I've actually changed some of the ways I see things and some of the ways I believe. I consider Maria to be a dear friend. I know if I needed anything, she would do everything within her power to help me. And I would do the same for her. She proved this to be true during Hurricane Milton. As the storm approached, she texted me to see if Michael and I were okay, and that if we needed a place to stay, she had a room at the motel ready for us. After the storm, she checked in to make sure we were okay, and again offered a room at the motel if we needed a place to stay. A couple of weeks ago, when we returned from the church cruise, my work husband, hi, Jose, if you're watching, he lots of times watches, uh, and friend at the motel, Jose, texted me to tell me that Maria's father had died very unexpectedly while we were away. I texted her immediately to offer our condolences and love. And Michael and I donated 50 trees in her father's name to be planted in one of our national forests. I share these experiences to say it is possible to be courteously respectful, to act with gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, making every effort to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace, even with those with whom we don't see eye to eye on things. Now, this is not to say that I don't use less than edifying and uplifting language for people on television newscasts or commercials that make statements that I would deem absolutely ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> I'm still a work in progress. I probably get it wrong more than I get it right, but at least I'm trying. As a young boy, I was taught to be courteously respectful to act with gentleness and patience, bearing with one another in love, making every effort to maintain the unity of the Spirit and the bond of peace. And yet, that biblical principle has taken me a lifetime of learning how to practice. And I'm still learning and still practicing until I get it right more than I get it wrong. How do we live in humility even during an election cycle? <laughs> How do we take red and blue and mix them together to make purple? How do we act courteously respectful with gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, making every effort to maintain the unity of the Spirit and the bond of peace? Well, I can tell you what I've learned over the years. I make every attempt to listen more and talk less. And listen, I'm opinionated. I can be a big mouth. But I've had to learn to, like I tell Millie, our little dog, when she's barking, shut your pie hole. I've had to learn to shut my pie hole and to listen, to listen. Not agree, but to listen. Give them space to speak their truth. It's their truth. They might be wrong. <laughs> uh, you know what I mean? But it's their truth, just as my truth is my truth. And they think I'm wrong, right? Right? But I want to be heard. I want to be listened to. And so do they. And so I've learned over the years that the way I can live in humility is to at least listen and to hear and to talk less. It's not always easy. It requires deep breaths and an inner dialogue that reminds me to zip it. Listening really is a lost art on many of us. We're often more busy talking and trying to make our point and thinking about 
what we're going to say next that we forget to remain calm and listen. Another way I try to practice humility or being courteously respectful is I try to keep in mind that those people who I believe differently than I, who believe differently than I do on a lot of topics, believe similarly to the way I believe on other topics. You know, when, when Hurricane Milton happened, as much as Maria and I disagree, her first response to me in a text was, are you guys okay? Do you need a room? I have one set aside for you and Mike and, and the animals. We shared that common bond of one another and of friendship, regardless of what we believed in anything else. And then when her dad died instantly, I knew full well what that felt like because my mom died instantly, no warning. And so we reached right out to her to show that we do share common bonds, that we do place emphasis on family and on love and all of those kinds of things. And those things really are so important that we recognize. Most all of us love our families and our friends. Most of us are hardworking people. Most of us want good in the world. We just have different beliefs about how to achieve what we think is right and best. I've learned that those who believe differently than I do are a part of God's creation and that God loves them just like God loves me. I've learned that praying for God to help me is effective and that with God all things indeed are possible and that God helps me close my big mouth when I need to and yet gives me grace to speak my truth in love when the opportunity is right to do so. There are, there are many, many times I bite my tongue, but then there are those times that I get to speak my truth. I'm not there yet. I've still got a way to go, but I'm better than I once was. Election day is what, 15 days away? Might be the longest 15 days of my life. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. And after election day, we must choose how we will live with and respond to the results of the election. If we win, are we going to gloat? All right, I'm starting over. Back to page one. Nobody got a thing out of this. Sorry, you did it. <laughs> ay, 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 in a bigger way. No! <laughs> We're not. We're going to be courteously respectful, right? Yes, yes. Come on, come on. <laughs> as we navigate through this election cycle and beyond, let us be courteously respectful. Let us act with kindness, gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, making every effort to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. May it be so. Amen. Yeah, I got confused. <laughs>
and bow myself before you, God on high. Shall I come before you with burnt offerings? Shall I come before you? Pleased with thousands of rams, with ten thousand rivers of joy, shall I give you my firstborn for my transgressions, the fruits of my body for the sin of my soul? shown all the earth. God has shown you what is good and what does our God require of you but to do justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly walk humbly with your God Loving God, we thank you for your watchful eye over us all, especially those who continue to suffer from the devastation and loss from Hurricanes Helene and Milden. Help them to find peace and comfort in your presence and the kindness of others that they experience. Help us to be conduits, conduits of your healing and provision to our community. We pray for the heart position of humility. Humility in such a way that we do not cheapen our own worth or value within, but that we take the alignment that we are here for a greater purpose than just our own gain. We pray that you will highlight to us what it truly means to live a humble life and that our own worth will be revealed by your light. In chapter 6, verse 8 of Micah, you say, O people, God has told you what is good, and this is what God requires of you, to do what is right, to love mercy, and walk humbly with your God. 
today we choose to walk humbly with you. We choose to live by your Holy Spirit and to follow your lead. Help us to hear you clearly, for we don't want to walk by pride and self-sufficiency. We want to walk with you. God, we live in a divided country that is, that is so politically divided. We feel passionate about our beliefs and it is time, at times difficult to accept the differing beliefs of others. Give us grace and mercy to live at peace and to endeavor to live by the motto, do unto others. Holy Spirit, send your peace and comfort to us all during these times of stress and division. Help us to genuinely receive your peace that passes all understanding. We pray for the unrest in our world. May there be an end to war and may unity and peace prevail. Touch world leaders that they will be filled with humility and not be driven by a need for control and power. We turn our hearts now to those who are sick, battling depression, feeling isolated and alone. We lift them to you in this moment, asking for a breakthrough of healing and strength. Stir the faith within those who are suffering that they may find your, your grace peace and healing. We turn our thoughts to the needs of those we personally know and love. In these moments, we now speak aloud the names and situations of those who are on our hearts. Let us now begin to speak those needs upon our hearts. We know you have heard these prayers this morning, and we ask your healing mercies not only for these whom we have named this morning, but also those who have been listed in the online chat and those on our prayer list and those we have yet to speak. Thank you for hearing our prayers this morning. We ask you to hear us now as we rise, as we are able, and pray the prayer that Jesus taught us, saying, our Creator, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory. Amen. Live in charity and steadfast love. Live in charity. God will dwell with you. may be seated and now on one of the great moments that often happens in our church as we welcome new members today we invite Jeffrey and Tay and Rachel to come forward and Atlee is going to join in with them amen <laughs> feedback okay wow please face the congregation all right. <laughs> so we're going to ask you a few questions. And uh, do you believe in God, our Creator, Christ, our Redeemer, and the Holy Spirit? And do you attempt to follow the teaching and example of Jesus? If so, your response should be, I do. I do. Have you been baptized in accordance with our Christian faith? If so, your response should be, I have. Believing that Christianity is experienced in a faith community 
that supports and strengthens our spiritual lives, that learns from us as we learned from it, do you promise to live and share with members of Suncoast MCC? If so, your response should be, with God's help, I will. As you unite with this church, will you worship, serve, and share in its ministry, supporting the church with your earnest prayers, regular attendance, loyal service, and faithful stewardship? And will you work together with your Christian brothers and sisters in love and harmony to promote God's dominion in this world? If so, please answer, with God's help, I will. With God's help, I will. All right. Will the members and friends of this church please rise as you are able? Beloved, we commend to your care these persons whom we receive this day as members of this congregation. Will you welcome them into this community of faith? If so, please say, we will. We will. will you love them, support them, nurture them and their families, and help them to grow in the life of Christ? Please say, with God's help, we will. With God's help, we will. Do you grant them the full rights and responsibilities as active voting members of Suncoast MCC? If so, please say, we do. We do. We do. Now please join me in prayer as uh, we bless these candidates for membership by the authority vested in me by Metropolitan Community Churches on behalf of the members of this church. I hereby joyfully receive you as members of Suncoast MCC. Amen. Amen. And we have a gift for you. Uh, <laughs> All right. I bless you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Mm. All right. Amen. Doesn't that feel great? Yeah. All right. Wonderful. Yes. <clears throat> so you may be seated. Uh, it's, so how many of you have voted so far? Raise your hands. Oh, look at that. Great. My, my ballot, our mail ballots are sitting on our table. We kind of didn't want to put them in the mail during all this hurricane, so I'm going to take them directly to the Board of Supervisors. And I, I always feel better this week, hopefully tomorrow. Pray for me that it happens tomorrow. Uh, so um, I want to thank again all the 13 people who showed up yesterday. We've had lots of people over time show up to help landscaping. And, uh, you know, sometimes uh, you can be in for more than you think you are. When Judy, who really runs our landscaping, and uh, as she said, she's been so careful around that pond. And yesterday, she just saw a bucket in the pond, and she went in to get it. And as she did, a five-foot alligator came toward her, and she backed up. <laughs> and Scott saw it and ran toward her to scare the alligator. And so that's the short version of the story. Judy... <laughs> Uh, Judy said uh, that was, you know, certainly your life flashes before you at moments like that. So there are signs that say, say beware of the alligator, but uh, sometimes we forget when we haven't seen one in a very long time. So thank God. Amen. For Amen. Judy's okay. So um, this week my class starts on Jesus for everyone, not just for Christians. It's a really great class based on a great book. Come at 4 o'clock. You can come any week. If you come all four weeks, it's a more complete experience, but uh, please join us. I want to thank, in terms of giving, uh, all those of you bringing diapers, you know, oftentimes Second Chance gets the diapers and brings them to us to distribute, but... They have had their hands full right now, uh, helping people in their communities. And so uh, we really wanted to be able to help out and just supply the diapers this month that we give to families in this area who really need that extra help. And uh, the volunteer coordinator at Glen Allen told us that they have plenty of girls' shoes, but for some reason they have a harder time uh, getting boys' shoes. They have uh, lots of uh, kids who are homeless, kids who... Uh, uh, live below the poverty line and uh, in their families and they really need shoes so they have a stock of shoes but they always always need more and so we want to be good neighbors to them and help them out um, also uh, in two weeks on November 3rd is All Saints big it's a big celebration we have here 
If you've already had a picture of your loved one put in the All Saints photo thing, you don't worry about it. We'll continue to do that. If you're newer and you haven't included a picture of a loved one, a parent or a, a parent, a child, a loved one, a spouse, uh, and you want to put it, uh, please bring the picture. Either send it to us through the information uh, through the email, or we can even take a picture of your photo next Sunday and make sure that it's included the following Sunday. So just let us know if you have additional photos, and we'll be in touch with you also this week. Um, so that's a really important thing coming up. I want to thank those of you. Uh, we have a wonderful board of directors, and we are going to have elections in about a month. And um, one of the great ways you can serve or give is to uh, offer yourself to be on the board of directors. I promise you it's better than be facing the alligator. So, you know, better than being on landscaping. So, uh, and uh, our congregation is, is uh, very appreciative of our board. I'm very appreciative of our board. And uh, we'll have uh, terms that'll be one year or two years. Um, and we would appreciate it if you'd pray about that and think about that and be open to it. So last but not least, thanks for all your extra giving. You're doing unto others this month especially is going to help so many. And thank you for your regular giving. Week after week, it keeps us going. And uh, I think that's something important to do. Amen. All right, please welcome our choir. What's that? Is that me? Please rise as you're able.
God, we're grateful for these gifts. We bless gift and giver in your many names and in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Here at Suncoast MCC, as with all MCCs around the world, we joyfully welcome everyone to this open communion. We are all invited to the table of Jesus, no exceptions. Here we know that the Spirit of God anoints us and empowers us to love and serve. This is the table where we are all seen and cherished by God and Christ. If you are worshiping online, I invite you to gather your bread and juice as we prepare for communion. For those who are gathered here, I invite you to retrieve the communion packet. If you did not receive a packet, please raise your hand for an usher. All right, got one right here, okay. The Holy One be with you. <clears throat> Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to our God. Let us pray. Gracious God, we give thanks for this open table where no one is sent away, where all are welcome. Today, we ask for your help to walk humbly with our brothers and sisters. It seems it is e times easier for us to build walls rather than bridges. Help us to see the value in others and count ourselves as equals, even with those whom we may disagree. This table reminds us that there is always hope and that you are always here for us. May we shine forth your light of love and welcome and embrace all who come through our doors. Amen. Amen. On the night in which Jesus was betrayed, he took bread, blessed it, and gave thanks, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you as you eat it. Remember me. And after supper, Jesus took the cup, gave thanks, and offered it to his friends who were with him, saying, Take and drink. This is my blood shed for you and for all, for the forgiveness of sins. When you do this, remember me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim Jesus until he comes again. Amen. God, we receive these gifts in humility today. We thank you for your humility in coming to us in the form of Jesus. And we ask that you would bless and consecrate these gifts, that we might be strengthened and encouraged in the week and weeks and months to come. As we eat this bread and drink this cup, may we be united as one community and consecrate not only these gifts, but us to your service. Amen. In just a moment, we will receive communion with the individual packets as we have been given. After receiving the elements, if you wish to come forward for a blessing, we invite you to do so. And now, whether participating from home or here in person, please consume the bread and juice. And after consuming, for those who would like to come forward, please move to the front of the sanctuary for a blessing. The body and blood of Christ given for you.
Thank you, God, for feeding us from your table of love and grace and for spiritually strengthening us through this meal. Help us live in humility, acceptance, and love in the coming days. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. And now, please stand as you are able, for Lord, dismiss us with your blessing. All right. Lord, oh, see, it's not have your own way. It's a different hymn. <clears throat>
now may you go from this walking in humility, patience, gentleness, and kindness with all who come your way. In Christ's name, amen. Amen.